nearly 600 pounds, and they race at their prey at speeds of 35 miles per hour. The lion's 30 big teeth are designed for tearing. None are for chewing. Cooperation may assure a more successful hunt, but it also means sharing the kill. So it only partly explained why lions were social animals. An individual cat feeding on its kill may result in a bigger meal, pound for pound. The problem was that only one part of the lion's life had been thoroughly studied. How lions behaved after hours was not known. Perhaps when they joined the night shift, the theory of cooperative hunting might be proved. New technology penetrated the night's curtain. Suddenly, the theater of darkness opened its wings and the missing scenes from the lion's drama were revealed. First, it was confirmed that they spent much of their time resting, as much as 20 hours a day. Most of their waking hours were spent in the dark, hunting, traveling as far as six or seven miles a night in search of prey. But the new information was disappointing, inconclusive. The lions gave up their secrets grudgingly. They hunted successfully either way. So as long as food was abundant, either tactic worked. But what would happen if famine set in? Perhaps that would determine whether the key to survival meant hunting in prides, living socially. The seasons of the Serengeti are not hot and cold, but wet and dry. These changes drive the lion's existence. Depending on the season, life ranges between feast and famine. A million wildebeest may migrate through the lion's territory. Then one day, they simply trot away in search of greener pastures. Not all animals migrate, and those that remain are few. The lions now face six hard months of hunger. The competition for prey and carrion is fierce, and the Serengeti is merciless. The grasses mowed by the hungry herds provide little cover for the hunt. Ostriches are starting to nest and often lay single eggs and abandon them. The coconut-sized shells present a problem. The jaw of the lioness isn't wide enough to pick it up. Although she can mouth the egg, her fully stretched muzzle isn't strong enough to crush the sturdy casing. The two-pound high-protein package simply won't yield. Because cheetahs run down their prey with stunning 60 mile per hour sprints, the short grass left in the herd's wake is less of a problem.
Unfortunately, the cheetah's dusty dash can be seen for miles over the burnt plains. And in the dry season, there's always a hungry lion in wait. No match for the approaching monster. The slightly built cheetah is half the lion's weight. In the dry season, lions scavenge almost 30% of their food. It's an important way for single lions to manage to survive. This female, however, lives in a group, and she will have to share her stolen spoils. Even at the height of the dry season, lions in large groups do well, though forced to take on more formidable prey, such as treacherous Cape buffalo. A single lion would have no chance against the powerful animal, which has been known to stalk attackers. But by cooperating, the pride has almost a ton of meat between them. In the end, cooperative hunting turned out to be more style than substance. Solitary lions were found to dine as well as the pride on the prowl, even under the worst stresses of the dry season. Hunting in packs was not the only secret behind the lion's sociability. There had to be another reason. This lioness has a withered leg, and lame animals rarely survive. She was hurt on a hunt. She would have died without the food and protection provided by the pride. And worse, she's a drain on their resources. She owes her life to her companions. Group living benefits the injured, but not the healthy cats. Healthy members are penalized. A predator with a useless leg is by definition a failure and should fall by the wayside. Why should the hunting lions share their food with the dependent lion and her cubs? The cubs were a clue. In the Serengeti, lions give birth all year round, and in each pride, cubs are often born in the same month. After a three and a half month pregnancy, an average of two or three cubs are born, usually in a cave or a gully, where they're protected from hyenas, leopards, or even other lions that would prey on them. When the mother goes hunting, the cubs are left unattended. But for safety, she will move them every week or so to a new hiding place. After about six weeks, the mother and cubs join the rest of the pride. The cubs will nurse until they're about six months old. And this suckling provides a link to the lion's riddle. For lions are unusual among large mammals. They will nurse cubs that are not their own, often having youngsters of very different ages feeding side by side. A mother's milk is a precious resource, and in most animals, it's reserved. The idea is that mothers should be careful not to squander their assets feeding someone else's baby. But lions are different. Why? The females in the pride are all related. Any cubs born into the pride have some genes in common with every lioness. They are thus family. They live together, and in a real sense, they know each other. Obviously, it's in the mother's interest to raise those cubs most closely related to her. And this she does. Each lioness may also produce different antibodies in her milk. 
so that suckling from several lionesses may give the cubs a greater immunity to disease than if they fed only on their mother's milk. But it was found that mothers in these maternity groups are often thinner than solitary mothers, and maternity groups don't always show communal nursing. So cooperating to nurse and feed the cubs did not fully account for the bond held by lions. The wet nursing females provided an important clue. But how did the males fit into the scheme? To his own cubs, a male lion is a gentle and tolerant father. But just how does he behave toward his cubs in the dry season, in times of hardship, when he is hungry and the kill is small? In nature, his selfishness is justified. If food is limited, it is best that the male, the guardian of the group, is well fed and strong. But even now, he will not hurt his scrounging cubs, no matter how relentlessly they pursue their snack. His fearsome presence might explain why the females group together. Perhaps in the lion solar system, the individual planets of the pride orbit around the awesome power of a dominant guardian male. Did this explain the lion's social behavior?